Four months after she went missing, Annalise's body has been recovered. Her family's hopes of her being found alive dashed. The whole family was, it was, it was worried, man. but now the family is not, is not right now just because it's disappointed, just because all the whole family is thinking maybe it's still alive. That's why now the whole family is, is not right now. But at the end, we found the closure. There's nothing that we can do. Only God knows why this thing had happened. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you very much for joining me here again today. So last week we spoke about the absolutely heartbreaking case of Jeremiah Raiders and that was quite the hectic case to talk about and if you haven't seen that I will link it up here for you. And today we are going to talk about a case that happened a couple of years ago but is still incredibly prevalent today. And like I said in last week's video, we still have quite a way to go to fix this epidemic that we have of murder in our country. And clearly still nothing has changed from around five to six years ago based on this case that we're talking about today. But today we're going to talk about the case of Annalisa Dulazi. And with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. Today we are heading to an area in Cape Town called Kailicha. And living here was a young lady named Annalisa Dulazi. She was a second year Rhodes University student. Annalisa had come home for December holidays to be with her mom who lived in Kailicha. Her mom's name is Vathiswa Dulazi. And those who knew Annalisa said that she was a very promising young student. She had massive dreams. And Annalisa also attended Chris Harney Arts and Culture High School. And Annalisa at Rhodes was a drama student and she was very good at it too. She also wanted to study at Wits University, but it seems as though this may have not been financially viable. Annalisa was described as incredibly vivacious, sweet and very charismatic. And on the 31st of January 2016, Annalisa and a couple of her friends went out because they were going to celebrate her 21st birthday. And everyone there was having an absolutely great time. They were showing her a lot of love and going to a couple of clubs and bars. But while they were busy club hopping, eventually when they got to one bar, Annalisa's friends noticed that she started talking to this guy. They were talking, they were busy dancing, and they eventually got a little bit closer and it does seem as though Annalisa then went home with this mystery man at the time. So it wasn't really a come home and we all continue to party kind of thing. It seems like just Annalisa and this mystery guy went home together. And I'm not sure if they maybe knew the guy beforehand, but they did let her go home with this guy alone. She was an adult and it was her 21st birthday. And the mystery guy that we are talking about, his name is Monwobisi Mbobo. And he is a very talented magician who happened to travel all over the world to perform his art. So I do see the connection between Annalisa and Mon Mobisi. But Mon Mobisi had just come back from Las Vegas. He was living the high life there and he was absolutely loving his job. And a couple months after the 31st of Jan when this all took place, he was then scheduled to head out to Italy to perform his magic tricks again. So Annalisa's friend saw Annalisa and Mon Mobisi leave together and alone. And they assumed that they both went back to his house for the night. But then night turned into morning and no one had heard from Annalisa. No one heard from her. No one received any texts. No one received any calls. There was radio silence. So her friends knew that she went home with this guy. And they knew that he was probably the last one to see her. But they didn't know who he was, where he lived, or even his number. However, there were some articles that pointed out that Annalisa or the Dulazi family knew who this guy was and it kind of leans more towards they knowing who this man was but on Monday morning Annalisa's mom then called Annalisa's friends because she wanted to know what happened to her daughter and the phone kept ringing the phone kept ringing and eventually Annalisa's friend picked up and she said that Annalisa hadn't come home she left her phone here at her friend's house and Annalisa's mom thought okay maybe she just went to work and she left it there to charge so she wasn't really that stressed but something was going on in the back of her head and said something just isn't right. So Fathiswa and Annalisa's mom then called back at the end of the day, end of the workday, and Annalisa's friend then picked up again. 
and she told Annalisa's mom that she still hadn't arrived home and she doesn't know where Annalisa was and only then did she tell Annalisa's mom that she went home with this guy and Vathiswa actually managed to get hold of Manwa BC so there must have been a connection where she knew who he was or she knew someone who knew who he was. But when Annalisa's mom and Manwa BC were actually talking, he said that he didn't see her. Yes, they went home together, but he then left her with some other guy and he doesn't know what happened to her at the end of the night. However, the witnesses on that night would say that Annalisa went home with Manwa BC and she entered the home and no one ever saw her leave. However, Vathiswa then said that she really does believe that her daughter is alive and this wasn't really like her. She was not a woman to go to multiple men's houses in the night and even if she did want to do that, it was not like her to not answer the phone, not call her mom and not let her know where she is. So Vathiswa believed that Annalisa was being kidnapped or being kept against her will and she said, quote, That guy claims to have left her with someone else. We spoke to three other people who all confirmed seeing her there, but nobody saw her leave. But she's not that kind of girl. She doesn't do parties or go out at night and run around with boys. Something must have happened to her. She might have been drugged and taken without her will. I have faith that she is still alive. I don't have the feeling that she is dead. If she is being kept without her consent, I want to plead and beg whoever has her to please bring her back. End quote. So time went on, search parties were called, friends of Annalisa's and friends of the community all gathered to help to try and find Annalisa. Then within a three to four month period, things hit a dead end and no one had heard from Annalisa. Then whispers started going around that Monwa BC was telling people about what happened that night and that Annalisa had come back to his house and he was telling people about what he had done to her. And eventually he told too many people and someone turned him into police. Police then came knocking on Manwa BC's door and they then asked him to come in for some questioning. Once Manwa BC was in police custody and he was in the interrogation room, he confessed and he sang like a canary. He let police know exactly what he did to Annalisa and where her body could be found. Like I said, during his confession, he did tell police where her body could be found and he said that he would take them now to find her body and he would point out where she was. So police and Manwa BC all got into the police van. They then headed back to Kailicha and they drove right up to Manwa BC's house. He then got out of the car. He walked to his next door neighbor's house, stopped, pointed at a concrete slab and said, there she is. Manwa BC was then immediately read his rights and arrested for the murder of Annalisa Dulazi. And her body was found in May of 2016. Manwa Bisi then confessed to Annalisa's murder and this is what he said. According to Manwa Bisi's plea deal, he said that he had been drinking whiskey when he met Annalisa while they were out on January 31st, 2016. The two then went home with each other where they then had sex and when Annalisa wanted to leave, Manwa Bisi said no she can't and he wasn't done. And when Annalisa kept wanting to leave, telling him that she wants to definitely go, he got angrier and angrier and then an argument broke out between them and they wrestled. Manwa BC then pushed Annalisa very hard, using a bottle to hit her over the head. When Annalisa was pushed, she hit her head against the wall and she slumped and fell to the ground. Manwa BC then left her. He didn't check on her. He left his home to seek help from a friend, but he couldn't find his friend. So he then returned to the room to find the body in the exact same position that he had left her, with dry blood on the floor. And he said that Annalisa's body was now stiff. As Annalisa was lying there, lifeless, Monwa BC then decided to continue to drink, not even caring to call an ambulance. Monwa BC then left his room, he left her, still lying on the floor, and he then headed to a Shabin to buy a bottle of Smirnoff vodka. He then sat in the Shabin and drank 500 mils of the vodka. Without diluting it, he drank it straight from the bottle. Monwa BC then left the Shabin and went back to his home. When he arrived back at home, he said that Annalisa was still in the exact same position that he had left her, with a lot more blood coming from her head. Monwa BC then decided to go to his neighbor's garden, where they were adding a section of home, so they were digging out the ground to add a concrete slab. So Monwa BC then continued to dig in this hole that was already kind of dug out, and he continued to dig a bit deeper, where he then put Annalisa's body inside the hole, covered her up with the sand that was in the garden and he knew that soon after this place was going to be covered in concrete. 
But before he put Annalise's body in the ground, he wrapped her head in a plastic bag. And Monrobisi then confessed that the cause of her death was the corner of a wall when he then pushed her into it. Monobisi Mbobo then asked for a plea deal that because of his confession, he would get a lighter sentence. And when the sentence was handed down to him, he agreed to it. And he said that he was aware of the consequences of what he had done. He also said that he entered the plea deal completely voluntarily and not being forced to because he was aware of what he had done and he wanted to be punished for his crime. However, during court, people did notice that when Mon Mobisi came into court, he had a lot of cuts on his face, his face was swollen, he had plasters across his nose, so someone must have got a hold of him and beaten him, and it is unclear how this happened, if it was in jail or if the police got hold of him. But Mon Bisi refused to make eye contact with anybody, he kept his hood over his face the entire time because he was aware that there were cameras in the court and people were taking photos of him. But the plea deal was agreed to, the judge agreed to it, and that's why this case could happen so quickly and there was such a swift arrest and sentencing. It does seem as though Mon Bisi was incredibly remorseful for what happened that night and he feels incredibly guilty. And in the end, Monrobisi Mbobo was sentenced to 15 years for the murder of Annalisa Dulazi and five years for her kidnapping. Both sentences are to be served concurrently. And so even though he signed a plea deal and even though he was sentenced to 20 years, it is most unlikely that he will spend that full time in jail. And when the sentencing was done, Annalisa's mom and Monrobisi's mom both met up and they hugged each other and they forgave each other. And Annalisa's mom said that she completely forgives Mon Mobisi for what he did because she said, quote, Forgiveness is the most important thing. He has shown remorse and apologized. If I don't forgive him, it means I'm taking on all of his sins and putting them on me. I'm happy with how this case has been handled. I'm feeling better, although I am sad. Annalisa's siblings are better, end quote. I do think that Mon Mobisi was incredibly remorseful and sorry for what he did once he sobered up and once he realized the extent of the damage that he did to Annalisa. However, he still did what he did and a life was still taken. And remember, he was the one going around telling people what he did. And if he hadn't have said anything, he may never have been caught. And was he telling people to brag? Was he telling people because he felt guilty? And was he only sorry that he got caught? But this is an incredibly senseless murder. Annalisa Dulazi was an incredibly promising student. She had so much going for her. And remember I said that she wanted to go to Wits, but it didn't look financially viable for her and her family. However, a few days after she went missing, her mom got a letter in the mail to say that she had been fully accepted to Wits University with a full scholarship. But, and imagine what she could have done if she was given that opportunity and it wasn't ripped away from her by Mon Mobisi. And Annalisa's mom was so excited to tell her about this news and she was waiting and waiting for Annalisa to come home to let her know about this incredible news. But let me know what you think down below. This was, like I said, an incredibly senseless murder and she was only trying to celebrate her 21st birthday. But I hope you all have a great weekend further. Please stay safe out there and I'll see you again next week. Bye!